Now let's consider the moments and center of mass of a planar lamina. Before, I considered moments and center of mass for a system of point masses in the plane. What we want to do now is consider what happens when we have a region in the plane where it's composed of a thin substance of a uniform density rho. Okay, let's quick review of density. So rho is my density. The units are going to be mass per area in this case. So it'll be kilograms per meter squared, for instance. If I want to get the mass of my planar lamina, it has uniform density of rho. So all I need to do is multiply by the area. That produces my mass. If we check the units, density is kilograms per meter squared. Area is going to be meter squared. We multiply through, the meter squares cancel out, leaving me kilograms, which is definitely units in terms of mass. Okay, let's take a look at the formulas we're going to be using. I'll do some examples, and if you're still going to stick around, I'll show you how the limit process gives us our formulas. So we're going to need three things. We want the center of mass x bar and y bar. We're considering the situation where I have function on top, function on the bottom, and then we're cut off by A and B. For the moment about Y, we take the density on the outside, definite integral from A to B, X times difference of F and G DX. For the moment about the X axis, so that's going to be going this way, we look at rho, definite integral from A to B, difference in F and G, but now instead of X, we multiply by F plus G divided by 2, the average, and then DX. For our mass function, note mass, we have uniform density here, so mass is just density times area, and the area of this region, we've already done that before, that's just take the definite integral from A to B of F minus G. Once I have these three items computed, we can get our coordinates for the center of mass, the x bar is going to be, remember we use the opposite letter, the moment about the y axis over the total mass m, and then the y coordinate, y bar is the moment about the x axis over the total mass m. Let's do some examples. Let's start with the simplest case, the rectangle, base b, and height h. So here's our picture, top function's h, bottom function's zero. For my moment about the y-axis, we have rho, definite integral from 0 to b, of x, top minus bottom, dx. So the h I can just pull out as constant if I want. Any derivative of x is 1 half x squared. So we're going to put our b into this, and then I'm going to get h b squared over 2 times rho. For my moment about the x-axis, rho in front, definite integral from 0 to b, top minus bottom, top plus bottom over 2, dx. Now note, everything in here is going to be constant. So I can pull out an h squared over 2. That's times rho. And then we're just left with definite integral from 0 to b of dx. Well, that's just going to give me an x going from 0 to b. So we're just going to have a b. So that's going to give me this term here. For my mass, I'm going to have rho, definite integral from 0 to b top minus bottom, the h is just going to pull out, and again, we're just taking the antiderivative of 1 times dx, so that turns into x, which leaves me with rho b h. If I want x bar and y bar, I just take the moment with the opposite letter, divide by the total mass. So for x bar, we're going to get b over 2. For y bar, I'm going to get h over 2, and note, that's what we would expect. If I had a rectangle, made of the same substance throughout, uniform density, then its center of mass is going to be dead center. It's going to be half the base, half the height. Let's take a look at the upper half disk. So here, I have a unit circle, I chop off at the x-axis, and then fill in what's left over with our substance of uniform density rho. Okay, my bottom function is g of x equals zero. Top function we just isolate the y in the equation of the unit circle. x squared goes the other side. We square root, get a plus and minus, and we throw away the minus because we only care about when y is above the x-axis 
y bigger than 0. So that's going to be my f. Moment about the y-axis. It's going to be rho, definite integral from minus 1 to 1, x, top minus bottom. We only have a top here. And so we're just going to compute this. This is a u substitution, so I let u be equal to 1 minus x squared. We follow our nose, and at the end of the day, what's going to come out is a 0. This makes sense because this side is equal to this side. So if I take the y-axis, this is just saying we're balanced if I go back and forth along the y-axis as my fulcrum. Okay, moment in the x-axis. We expect something interesting here because we don't have this symmetry in this direction. Formula says take rho, definite integral from minus 1 to 1, top minus bottom, top plus bottom over 2. This is nice because the radical is going to disappear. I could bring the 2 out in front, and then I'm taking the antiderivative of 1 minus x squared, put in minus 1 and 1, and take their difference. So we follow that through, and that's going to leave me with 2 rho over 3. All I need now is the mass, and then I can get my coordinates. Here, we don't need to do any work to get the mass. I have a circle, radius 1, so its area is going to be pi r squared, or just pi, and then the top half is just going to be half of that. So my area is pi over 2, which means my mass is pi over 2 times rho. Okay, the mass is rho, your density, times your area. We stick our points in. So x bar is going to be moment in y, it's the opposite letter, divided by total mass. Well, this was 0, so x bar is going to be 0. For my y bar, I take the moment in x, opposite letter, and then I take that and I divide by the total mass. So I have 2 rho over 3 divided by pi rho over 2. That 2 is just going to move to the top to give me a 4, and then I'm looking at 4 over 3 pi, the rows are going to disappear. So this is roughly 4 ninths, and that's roughly a half. So we expect our center of mass to be slightly below the half point here. Okay, it's going to be 0 in this direction, and then a little bit less than a half in this direction. So our center of mass is there. So if I pull this off the board and I want to balance it, I have to stick my finger right there. Now let's look at the region given by fusing a triangle with a parabolic region. Our top function is going to be f of x equals x. Our bottom region is going to be x squared minus x. To get the center of mass, we're going to have to compute both the moments. The moment about y, formula says rho, definite integral over the region, so here it's going to go from 0 to 1, of x times top minus bottom. We follow our nose through, and then we see that the moment about the y-axis is rho, 5 twelfths. The moment about the x-axis, it's going to be rho, definite integral from 0 to 1, our region, top minus bottom, times top plus bottom divided by 2. When we figure that out, we're going to wind up with a 2x cubed minus an x to the fourth, bring the half out in front, follow your nose, and then that's going to give us 3 rho over 20. For the total mass, that's just going to be given by the density times the area. So the area we just get by integral top minus bottom. And so I wind up there with a 2 rho over 3. To get the center of mass, we just take the moments and divide by the total mass. So remember, x bar goes with the opposite, so it goes with the moment for y. And so we're going to get a 5 eighths, and for y bar I'm going to get 9 over 40. So this is going to be somewhere, okay, 5 eighths is going to be a little bit over a half, and then 9 over 40 is going to be about 1 quarter up. So it's somewhere around here. All right, let's take a look at another way to do this problem, but it's more, going to be more illustrative of how you add two centers of mass together. So the idea is, suppose when I came into this problem, I already had the mass and center of mass for each region. So suppose I have each of these. So you can go and work these out. The mass for the triangle will be a half with center of mass at 2 thirds, 1 third. 
the mass of the parabolic piece will be 1 sixth rho, and then the center of mass will be 1 half minus a tenth. Well, how would you combine these? Well, the whole point of this center of mass computation is to take the region and really just squish everything down to a point mass. So um, I don't care about the shape at all anymore. I just want to encode everything as a point and a mass attached to that, and then we can do physics. So the idea would be, if I want to figure out the center of mass or these two regions combined, we just use our rule for adding the two point masses that came out. So let's take a look. My x bar from before is just going to be given by add the moments for each point mass and then divide by the total mass. Well here our x's are going to be two thirds and one half and these are our masses. So we stick them in and then you notice we can clean this out by multiplying by 12 row over 12 row and that's going to leave me with 5 eighths which is what I had in the original answer. For the y bar same idea. We take out the y values the one-third and the minus a tenth. Our masses are a half row and a sixth row. We put them in there. I can clean this up by multiplying by 60 row over 60 row. And then you notice 9 fortieths comes out, and that was what we got with our original answer too.